Hey guys, having a network drive or network attached storage is awesome. It allows you to be able to access your files from any device on the network or even on the go if you're connected with VPN. If you've ever worked for a company and you had a computer, you know how important it is to have a network drive so that you can easily share files with other coworkers while you're on the network. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set that up and be able to access your files from anywhere. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a user group that I'm gonna assign access privileges to this network drive. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna create a group with group add and let's call it network drive. Okay, and let's add myself to this group. So I'm gonna do user mod, add a group, and we're gonna say network drive, and my username, which is Thomas. Now, if I check my groups, let's see here, groups, you can see that it hasn't actually taken effect yet. If I type in groups and Thomas, I can see that I am in that group. Um, so to get this refreshed, I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm back in. Let me open up a terminal and let's try it again. And we can see that I have effectively been added to the network drive group. So now I need to actually create or mount my network drive to a certain location. So let's create a folder if you already have like a RAID drive mounted to your mount location, this is probably where you would want to do it. Uh, I'm just going to do it inside of this location, serve and shared. And I might need pseudo permissions to do this. So let me go ahead and do that and add pseudo and we've created this directory, and now I'm gonna assign ownership to that network drive group. That way, if I need to create any additional users that I wanna to add to that group, I can do that, and they'll automatically have the privilege to view that drive. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do chown, and we're going to give this, I'm not gonna change the user um, owner, but I'm gonna change the group owner to network drive, and I'm going to specify the path to that location I want to mount. Okay, and then now I just want to make sure that the user and the group have read write permission. So I'm going to do chmod, and for read write, we're doing 770, and I'll do serve shared. So this is going to be my drive location again. And because this isn't really a standard place to access the file, I wanna be able to see my network drive here in my server too. So let's actually create a symbolic link from my own home page. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna do link dash S, and then I'm going to do my shared drive location and Let's call this, uh, we'll just call it drive like that. Okay, and then now we have this link here. So that goes right to that network drive location. And let's go ahead and add a file there. So let's go, let's CD over to that drive. And then I'm just going to touch test.txt. So I've got that, let me go ahead and open this up and I'll say hello there and save this. So that is now in my network drive. So let's see if we can go ahead and map this. Uh, what I need to install is an implementation of SMB. So that's the protocol that we can um, used to, to map a network location. And the service we're gonna use is called Samba. So kind of like SMB, they just threw in a uh, A there, make it Samba. So first thing we're gonna do is update our apt-git. And now we're gonna install Samba. So I'm gonna do apt-git 
install Samba. Yes. Okay, now that Samba is installed, we need to get into the configuration file so that we can specify any network drives. And of course, we're gonna use that serve shared location that I already created. So let's go ahead and tap into the network drive. Go to etc samba and smb.config. Okay, let's jump down to the bottom of this configuration file. You can use the page down button to get there a little faster. And we're going to configure a new network drive location. So I'm just gonna call it network drive. You can call this whatever you want. And then we're gonna give three spaces and add a path. So this is going to be path equals, and this is going to be that SRV shared folder. I'm gonna go ahead and say read only equals no. Uh, you could obviously change that to yes to make it read only. And that's all I really need to write. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this out to the config file. And let's go ahead and restart the Samba service. So we do sudo service smbd restart. And the only thing I need to do now is actually create a Samba user. Um, so you can create Samba users from Linux users. Right now I'm the only one, uh, I'm the only user on my Linux system. So let's go ahead and create a Samba user for myself. So we're gonna do sudo smb pass word like that, dash a, and then I'm gonna specify my Linux user. So we're just kind of creating a new smb password. Let's just do smb, that's fine. Bad password, but you can see just smb, that's my password. Now let's see if we can map this network drive in Windows. Because the only other thing I want to do is just note my IP address. So let's go IP address show. And this is the value that we're going to connect to. So in Windows, let's just see what happens if I connect to 192.168.4.173. And I did actually forget to open up the firewall port. So let's check our UFW status and it is active. And now we need to enable the Samba uh, app or the Samba port. To do this, I'm just gonna do sudo UFW allow Samba. Okay, now we should allow Samba connections. Let's hop back over to Windows Explorer and I'm going to try connecting. And then there you go. There's that network drive that we configured in the configuration file. Let's see if I can open it. Okay, and we see that when I try to open it, I actually get access is denied because I have to sign in with those Samba credentials. Of course, I can just try to you know, go into that location through Windows Explorer. Let's actually just map this as a network drive so I can always access it. So I'm gonna go down to this PC. This is just like on Windows 10 as well. And we're gonna go to map network drive. And sure, we'll give it a drive letter of X. And I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the network drive location, so that guy, and we're gonna connect using different credentials. And so I'm gonna specify my Linux username, and then this is the SMB password. So let's give that a shot. And boom, here we are. I got my network drive going. So I can open up that test.txt file, and then we have the hello there. Let's go ahead and say hello from my Windows workstation. And let's save that. So just saved it. There it is, it's in the network drive. So I called it network drive. Of course you can call it whatever you want. And you can easily create additional drives with different privileges. So if I want a drive 
that only I have access to. I can easily do that. If I want to drive that my wife and I can both access, I can do that as well. So let's just go ahead and let's hop back into the server here and let's look at that drive location. Let's open this up and you can see that it's the same file, right? I wrote to it from Windows. So that is how you set up a network drive. So again, one of the biggest reasons why you're gonna do this is so that you can access all of your huge storage, wherever it is. So if you mount you know, a RAID array of hard drives to your server, you can now access that RAID array as a network drive from your computer, from any device, from your phone. I access my network drive from my phone on the go with my VPN client. If you haven't installed your own VPN, make sure to click that link up there to uh, get you a VPN set up using WireGuard, easily configured within a couple minutes. So now you can connect to your network drive on the go and run your own network just like someone would at a company. If you found this video useful, please let me know down in the comments. Please hit the like button, helps out a whole lot. And subscribe to see more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, have a good day.